Hey everyone, welcome to another Kamundo tutorial. This time we will cover the basics of decision modeling and notation. This feature is extremely important from the business rules perspective and the DMN itself is not owned by a particular enterprise, but as an established standard it is also supported and implemented by Kamundo. But how is it really utilized? Let's go ahead and find out. To start with, let's begin with a very simple process that will reflect a client's acceptance cycle. At the very beginning, we will have a user task in which we will collect three variables, risk, income and a product. In the next step, we will use them in our decision table and following that, we will have a gateway that regarding the output variable of the decision table will go in a different way. For the sake of this tutorial, let's also implement a simple delegate for a service task upon one of the gateway paths. Now that the process is almost ready, let's create a new DMN table. The input variables will be the ones that are injected through the form in the previous human task and output variable will be a boolean variable called accepted. All we need to do now is to create a few custom rules which will ultimately become a business logic of our DMN. Don't forget to set the name and an ID of the decision. Later on, we will use them to reference the table inside the process. In this tutorial, we will also follow the unique hit policy. It specifies that only one rule can match. Verify that the decision table contains only one rule that can match the inputs. Click on the hit policy dropdown and choose the hit policy called unique. If none is selected, then it is also the default one. Now let's get back to our process and in the specified task, let's refer to the table that we just created. The last part that is left is to quickly implement a delegate that will be triggered upon the send contract task. In previous tutorials, we already discussed the mechanisms of code delegation, so this time we will not surface this topic. Instead, you can just quickly jump back to one of our previous videos. This time, our delegate will simply log some information on the console. Let's start our application. Of course, we have to deploy our process and DMM and table definitions. Now if we go back to the task list panel, we can start a process instance. As expected, it has stopped on the human task and the user is prompted with this form. As you probably remember, these are the variables that we defined in the modeler as a part of this human task and further, their values will be used in the DMN table to evaluate the final boolean variable called accepted. Depending on its value, the process will continue in different paths of the gateway. If it's true, we should follow the path with the service task that should print some information on the console and let's start with this approach. To start with, we will pass a successful set of data that will also match our unique hit policy. Now the process is completed, if we go back to the console, there we go, the final variable was evaluated as expected. Now let's try again, although this time let's choose a different set of data. This will not match any of the successful data sets. As we can see, nothing has happened in the console, which means that Gateway directed us in a different path, which ultimately means that the output variable was set to false. That was just a very simple example on how the DMN might be implemented using Kamunda platform. And to summarize, a decision table represents decision logic, which can be depicted as a table in DMN 1.3. It consists of inputs, outputs, and rules. A hit policy specifies how many rules of a decision table can be satisfied and which of the satisfied rules are included in the decision table result. The hit policies unique, any and first will always return a maximum of one satisfied rule. The hit policies rule order and collect can return multiple satisfied rules. This is how Kamunda implements DMN in a nutshell. Its biggest advantage is the independence that you acquire from external vendors' products. As a Kamunda developer or business analyst, you can model and execute your own logic according to your needs, and this lightweight approach can really enhance the development in production. That's the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. See you next time.